Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh card review slash discussion type video. This is something I have not done in a little while, but these cards actually interest me a lot because I actually really like the way they're designed, and I actually like the archetype that they are being spoiled for. Now, what we have is in Duelist Pack 21, or DP21 is the set code, the technical name for the set is Duelist Pack Legend Duelist 4, which comes out in the OCG in three days on November 10th. What we have is we have a new set of Lunalite -like cards that at the very last minute has been spoiled to us. A new set of five cards for Lunalites that are actually very interesting to me because usually when these anime archetypes like, you know, Red Eyes, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, Relinquished, any of these sorts of things, usually when they get new support, they involve some sort of retrain to completely change the way the archetype functions to sort of update it to more modern Yu-Gi-Oh! standards. But what I find interesting about this support wave is that out of all five of these cards, all that they do is strengthen the base of the deck's current, you know, mechanical, you know, design, and then only take it a bit higher, making certain card interactions within the deck work a little bit better, be easier to perform, and do all sorts of other stuff. So I actually am really, you know, enjoying the way that this support wave looks, and it's something that I'm actually kind of excited to, you know, mess around with, at least on a casual level, when the cards are released in the OCG, and then eventually released in the TCG. But so, we have these five cards we're going to be going over, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go over those cards, and I want to know what your thoughts are in the comments down below about this support wave. But other than that, before we get into it, if you're new here, and like what you see, and like the channel, and want to see more combo videos, more discussion videos, and stuff like that, consider subscribing if you haven't already. It would help out a lot, you'd see more stuff and I'd love to welcome you on board. But basically, let's start talking about these Luna Light cards before I start rambling on too much further. So, first thing we have is a new fusion monster for the archetype, Luna Light Saber Dancer. It is a level 9 Dark Beast Warrior fusion effect monster with 3,000 attack and 2,600 defense, and its materials are just any three Luna Light monsters. So this is already sort of a step up and upgrade from the fusions we had on the Luna Light deck previously, which required you to step up through fusion monster names like Cant Dancer, Panther Dancer, ultimately up into Leo Dancer as the big boss monster for the archetype. This is a bit more generic for you to summon, meaning you could do so potentially a lot easier. But so, its effect is you can only use this card's third effect once per turn, and its first effect is gains 200 attack for each Beast Warrior monster that is currently banished or in a graveyard, so it gets bigger than 3k as soon as you hit the field with it because all the Luna Lights are Beast Warriors. Its second effect is cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effect, and then its third effect is during your main phase except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one fusion monster you control. It gains 3,000 attack until the end of this turn. So that is the effect you can only use once per turn. And uh, obviously, because it's the only activatable effect, the other ones are continuous status effects of you can't target it and it gains the attack. Basically, this card is really cool because it's a fusion monster. You're not going to be using it as a stepping stone into any of the other fusions because it's not the proper names for any of those fusion requirements. But basically, this card doesn't get to use its effect the turn it was sent, so that means if you're trying to OTK your opponent with it, you do have to put this in grave and then wait a turn, which is a bit of a problem. But if this does resolve and say you stacked this onto a Leo Dancer, that's absolutely game ending on the spot because Leo Dancer has pretty strong immunity not being able to be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. It attacks twice, it's already a 3500 base, this would make it gain 3k, and then you have the other cards of the archetype that give attack boosts that you could stack on top of that, but basically a 6500 attack Leo Dancer attacking twice and blowing up your opponent's board to swing directly of all their special summon monsters is actually just kind of really frightening, so kind of glad that this effect doesn't have an effect that could be activated the turn it went to the graveyard. The fact that you have to wait a turn actually sort of makes a bit of sense. But so, that's the new fusion monster for the archetype, and then we get into the two new main deck monsters for the archetype. First of which being Lunalite Emerald Bird, which is a level 4 Dark Beast Warrior effect monster with 1200 attack and 1000 defense. And this card's effect is, you can only use this card name's first and second effects once per turn each, and its first effect is, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send one Lunalite card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, draw one card. Now see, that effect is actually really cool, because there were already two Lunalite monsters in the deck that had effects that just triggered when they were sent to graveyard by a card effect and not specifically as being fusion summoned, uh, fusion monster material essentially, and those were Crimson Fox and Kaleido Chick. Those had effects that triggered when they were sent to the graveyard by a card effect, and based off the translation that we currently have of this card, 
the you can send one Lunalite card from your hand to the graveyard is not a cost. It is part of the resolution of the effect. You send, and then if you do, you draw a card. The way that the translation is currently worded is what that indicates, and it would make sense if that's the way it worked, because this card, as well as the other new Lunalite monster, also have graveyard effects that trigger when they're sent there by card effect. So if these cards are meant to be, you know, working with each other and then working with the other two Lunalites in the deck that have when sent to graveyard by card effect effects, Crimson Fox and Kaleido Chick, then that actually gives a nice level of cohesion to the deck in terms of what it's capable of doing outside of its fusion summons, which is really good. But so that's just its first effect. Its second effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, so it could be done with another copy of itself or by another card that sends to grave by card effect, you can target one level four or lower Lunalite monster you have that is currently banished or in your graveyard, except for Lunalite Emerald Bird, so except for itself, other copies of itself. Special summon it in defense position, but its effects are negated. Pretty strong, you know, pretty strong. It negates the effects, but it's a free summon that can be triggered by other copies of this card to draw a card. It can be triggered by fusion summoning with it. Very, very good. I really, really like this card in particular, as well as the other new main deck monster. They really add a very interesting dynamic to the deck because, like I said, they work with themselves with their secondary effects of being sent to the graveyard by card effects, but these also work to supplement other cards we've already had in the archetype's history of Crimson Fox and Kaleido Chick. Moving on to the next new main deck monster, we have Lunalite Yellow Martin, which is a level 4 Dark Beast Warrior effect monster with 800 attack and 2000 defense, and its effect is you can only use this card's 1 and 2 effects once per turn each, and its first effect is if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target one Lunalite card you control, except for Lunalite Yellow Martin, so except for another copy of itself. Return that card to your hand, and if you do, special summon this card in defense position, but banish it if it leaves the field. So. This is very interesting. I don't know if you would find yourself using the summon from hand effect that often, although it would come up, but this card in your graveyard lets you bounce a Lunalite to your hand to special summon itself from grave in a Zephyros style fashion, but then banishes itself when it leaves the field. That's actually really, really strong because that's another fusion material for literally no investment. And then this card also has an effect that triggers when it was sent to the graveyard by card effect, which means that if you're discarding this card for like the, uh, the last card, Emerald Bird, or if you're using this card as a fusion material, you also have an effect that you're triggering there while you're putting this card in the graveyard just to bounce a Lunalite monster and special summon it to gain more resource advantage. So, very strong effect and very good for this deck specifically because outside of Kaleido Chick and outside of Black Sheep, when it's used as a fusion material adding back a Lunalite monster, there wasn't really a lot of ways for this deck to maintain the cards that you were using to perform these subsequent fusion summons as you were stepping up into the bigger fusion monsters that required the smaller fusions to make. But So this sort of helps mitigate that and makes them a bit stronger. But its second effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, so by uh, Emerald Bird or by fusion summoning, and if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can add one Lunalite spell or trap from your deck to your hand. Cannot add Lunalite perfume because that is not a Lunalite spell and trap, that is a Luna Light spell and trap so there's a little bit of a problem there but basically there are some new lunar light spells and traps in the support wave specifically one new spell and one new trap that you are capable of searching with this card and so you can use this card send it to the graveyard for emerald bird to draw a card then get a search and then bounce the emerald bird and summon this card back that's a very simple two card interaction that just this new support wave allows normal summon emerald bird discard the yellow martin yellow martin searches a lunalite spell or trap from your deck to your hand and then you get to bounce emerald bird to your hand special the yellow martin you've lost no resources you still have the original two cards you started with but then you have a draw and a search so that's just a casual plus two in terms of just the way these two cards interact with one another so that's actually really good when you factor the amount of resources that go into performing fusion summons because you have to have poly and then you have to have the fusion materials in most cases but so those two monsters are very very good for the archetype they're very good new support they're probably going to be some of the stronger monsters in the main deck supplementing the ones that we already had previously but so we have two new spells and traps to go over as mentioned previously and the first one is the new spell we have lunalite fusion a normal spell card 
that says you can only activate a card with this card's name once per turn, and its effect is Fusion Summon a Lunalite Fusion Monster using monsters in your hand, or that you control as fusion materials. If your opponent controls a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you can use one Lunalite monster in your deck or extra deck as one of the fusion materials. Now, this card is insane. I don't know if we're just going to be giving every fusion-based archetype a Shadal Fusion-like card, because, I mean, Infernoid's got one. I think Relinquished Fusion has something that's sort of similar. Shadal Fusion's obviously, like, super powerful and is impossible to be power crept as long as good Shadal Fusions exist in the game. Uh, basically, <laughs> this card is actually really good because it circumvents a problem the deck had, which was stepping up into the bigger fusions. Now, Kaleido Chick also sort of was, you know, there to address that problem of Kaleido Chick's effect sending a fusion monster to the grave, copying its name, meaning you could then fuse straight up into Leo Dancer. But this is just another card that's also a searchable Speller Trap off of your Yellow Martin because it's called Lunalite Fusion. It's not separated in the name like Lunalite Perfume is. It is called Lunalite Fusion. And so you could search it off Yellow Martin, and if your opponent has an extra egg monster on the field, you basically get to send your Panther Dancer from your uh, extra egg to your graveyard for free, and then use any other monster to fusion summon with into Leo Dancer, just straight up. That's actually very strong. It's a very powerful interaction because of how powerful Leo Dancer is, but it also means that like it actually just makes it easier for you to fusion summon because that's one less card in your hand that you needed for the fusion summon because you don't have to be using a monster from your extra deck. You could just be, you know, sending a Lunalite monster from your deck to the graveyard. One that would trigger off of a card effect sending it to the graveyard by chance, like Yellow Martin, or Emerald Bird, or Crimson Fox, or Kaleido Chick. Like, you could, you know, send these from your, <laughs> from your deck to the graveyard if you don't need to send one from your extra deck. So, very, very strong card, very good fusion card, considering this deck already has access to... Black Sheep, which is one of the best polymerization searchers in the game because you can discard it to add poly or keep it in your hand as a Lunalite monster or use it to become another Lunalite monster in your graveyard. Black Sheep is one of the best poly searchers that the game has currently, which always made Lunalite a bit of a better fusion deck in terms of how cohesive it is because usually you have fusion decks that are designed around the fusion spells and the monsters being pretty separated and if you have a handful of too many fusion spells you tend to brick but if you have a handful of too many monsters and no fusion spell you also bricked lunar lights is sort of unique in that you have the black sheep which is easily accessible through tenki which is either a lunar light monster a lunar light monster recursion or searches poly so that's really interesting but then you're adding this fusion card on top of that and then you already had a card like Wolf, like Lunalite Wolf, which in your Pendulum scale is Miracle Fusion for the Lunalite deck. So this deck has infinitely like accessible ways for you to Fusion Summon in the most economical way possible. So it's a very interesting new card for the archetype, and only bolsters what the card, what the archetype can do with their fusion uh, tools, essentially. But so, last new card that has been spoiled for release is the Continuous Trap card, Lunalite Serenade Dance. And its effect is you can only use the second effect of this card's name once per turn. Its first effect is when a fusion monster or monsters is fusion summoned to your side of the field, you can target one of those monsters, apply the following effects. Special summon one Lunalite token, Dark Beast Warrior, level 4, 2000 attack, 2000 defense, to your opponent's field. And then the other applied effect is that target gains 500 attack for each monster the opponent controls. But basically, this is just going to be a card that serves to make your fusion monsters bigger. But that's not even the good part of this card's effect. Its second effect, the effect that is a once per turn, is during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send one card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one Lunalite monster from your deck. That is insane. That is a very, very good effect. That is very similar to how Lunalite Perfume operates, how that card is a monster reborn when you have it in your hand, but then when it's in your graveyard, you banish it and discard a card to add a Lunalite card from your deck to your hand. This card is even better because this card can be, you know, Foolish Burial Goods to the graveyard if you wanted to do so. Or if you hard draw it, you could just discard it with one of your, like, Emerald Birds, Emerald Eagle, whatever the card's name is called. Emerald Bird. I was right. You could discard this with Emerald Bird to draw a card and then immediately use this to banish itself from grave, discard a card, special summon a monster from your deck like Kaleido Chick or something that would give you some value. 
there's a bunch of different applications for this card in different ways in different scenarios so this is a really really good support card for the deck it's not something that's going to be super abusable because it is a hard once per turn so if you load up all the extra copies it's going to be hard for you to do anything with like you basically just have been doing that like as an extra step that doesn't really get you anywhere and these are trap cards that which means if you do draw them with no way to get them in the grave there's not really going to be much you can do with them because it's on field effect is honestly not that great because it's a trap that you have to flip and then it only gives you like a small attack boost and gives your opponent a token so it's on field effect is actually pretty lackluster and in your hand it's not a lunalite monster meaning it's not something you can fuse with but this card's grave effect though if you can get this card to grave any card in your hand becomes special summon a lunalite monster from your deck any lunalite monster collide a chick emerald bird any of them anything that would have an effect that would trigger for you in the immediate you know time frame that would be good for you is at your grasp with this card in your graveyard so i personally really like this trap card i really like this entire support wave every single card in this support wave is basically above average support in terms of what decks usually get in, in like legacy support like you could see the dragoonity support wave as an example that only had like two good cards in it and the rest didn't really fit the theme that well whereas these cards all are super super well meshed with the lunalite theme and only allow the deck to be taken higher than it currently is but so these cards are really cool i really like them i'm really interested in the applications of lunalite fusion and the two new main deck monsters specifically emerald bird discarding cards that also have discard effects when they're sent to the grave like crimson fox other copies of emerald bird yellow martin and kaleido chick i'm very interested to see how this could play out into a new age lunalite deck but so anyway that is all of the cards that are being new spoiled to us for Luna Lights. As far as we know, there might be some more. There's three days between now and when the set officially drops in Japan. Maybe there will be a couple cards left. Who knows? Not me. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on these cards in the comments down below as well. Are you a fan of Luna Lights? Do you hate Luna Lights? What's, what's your you know deal with the deck? What's your like standpoint with it? I would love to know that in the comments down below as well. But other than that, links is always in the description down below to my Twitch page where I stream regularly. If you're interested in that, go to that, follow that, get notified next time I go live and play some Yu-Gi-Oh! And also a link to the channel's Discord server is in the description where you can chat with me and some others on a daily basis as well as I announce when I'm streaming there as well as adding everyone. So if you want an actual like proper notification, uh, you will get that there as well. But so other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe if you want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Like I've already said, I'd love to have you on board. But other than that, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I'll see you in the next video.